This trendy superfood isn't news to the indigenous groups that have been using it for thousands of years. If you look past all the hype, you'll find a fungus with enormous potential to even cure cancer. But buyer beware, for all its benefits, this fungus is at risk of being over-harvested unless we find a sustainable way to grow it. This is chaga. Hi, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Florologic. Today we're talking about a cure-all that might actually cure all. Chaga, otherwise known as birch conch, cider conch, and clinker polypore, which actually kind of sounds like the name of a rich old guy wearing a monocle. In case you missed it, Animal Logic has launched a channel membership program. It's the easiest way to support the channel and help us keep bringing you original nature content. If you become an Animalogic superfan, you'll get priority replies to all your comments, photos and status updates when we're out in the field. Scene one, take one. Discounted merch from our spring store, Danielle's art from the show, as well as Animalogic exclusive emojis and loyalty badges. There's also a few exciting new perks in the works. So if you like the channel and want to support us and be part of Animalogic, please become a member by clicking the join button below. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. Inanatus obliquus is a parasitic fungus of the Hymenocetaceae family that grows mostly on birch trees, but less commonly on other hardwood trees like oak, poplar, ash, alder, and maple. Chaga can be found in the Northern Hemisphere and grows in Canada, the US, as well as Europe and Asia. While some like it hot, Chaga likes it cold. The colder, the better. Chaga thrives especially when its host tree has to endure a lot of stress due to extreme temperature changes, going from warm in the summer to frigid in the winter. Chaga grows between 10 and 20 centimeters wide and looks burnt and crumbly on the outside, but is orangey brown on the inside. The outside actually contains lots of melanin, which is why it sports this distinctive black hue. This high melanated fungus sprouts when its spores come into contact with an injured part of a host tree, allowing easy access to the tree's heartwood. The chaga will keep growing as long as the tree is alive, but with this parasitic fungal infection, the tree's days are already numbered. That's because the chaga causes the heart to rot, eventually killing the tree in 10 to 80 years. But why kill the tree at all? Lots of other parasitic species keep the host alive, so they don't murder themselves out of a free ride. It kills because the chaga needs the tree dead to move on to its next life cycle. The black crusty part that you see while the tree is still active is actually the asexual form of the chaga, otherwise called sterile mycelial masses. This part doesn't have any spores and can't make new baby chagas. The sexual form, otherwise called the fruiting body, appears between the bark and sapwood as a yellowish crust that turns brown two to 12 years only after the tree dies. It's from this fruiting body that the spores will take to the wind to find new injured trees, and the life cycle of the chaga continues. If you Google the word chaga today, you'll be inundated with pills, tinctures, teas, and powders promising a wealth of health benefits. Though chaga seems to be the hottest superfood on the internet, snowballing in popularity over the last decade or so, many foraging cultures have already been using chaga medicinally for thousands of years to treat an array of ailments. The Kanti people, an ergic indigenous people from Siberia, for example, have long been using chaga to treat parasitic worms, tuberculosis, and digestive problems like gastritis and ulcers. They even use chaga as preventative medicine for heart and liver disease. The Kanti people administer chaga in one of three ways, as a tea, inhaled as smoked, and as soap water. The soap water is made by burning the chaga and placing the smoldering charcoal into hot water and stirring until it breaks down. This water has been used to clean hands and feet, in the ritual cleaning of women after menstruation, and of newborn babies after birth. Indigenous peoples across Canada and the US, along with other cultures around the Northern Hemisphere, have also been using chaga in traditional healing for thousands of years. Chaga is chock full of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, like antioxidants, amino acids, and plant sterols, which is like the plant version of cholesterol. Since chaga is a parasite on birch trees, it actually sucks all of these good nutrients out of the tree, making them available to humans who harvest the fungus. Okay, check this out. Here we got chaga, 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 chaga mushroom. I'm gonna drink it, and it's not gonna make me a crazy person like coffee does. 
Crazy. Check this out. It's like little, like hard knoblets, delicious knoblet. As you can see, I ground them up real nice. And let's just put like two, two teaspoons. That's a good amount for me. Just filling that up. Look at that. Looks like coffee. Smells surprisingly like coffee. And we just go and like steep it, just like a couple minutes. Just like let it steep. I take a little package of stevia, which is my sweetener of choice. Put it here in my hot toddy glass. Oh yeah, that's looking great. I'm liking the look of that. You liking the look of that? And then we just have a little squirt. Easy as one, two, chaga. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ow! So I put some cubes in. And then I put some plant-based things that are pretending to be milk in it. Give it another little stir. And I'm gonna drink chaga. I'm gonna drink chaga. Delicious and also nutritious. Let's, let's talk more about it. So far, over 200 compounds have been extracted and identified from chaga but the recent popular interest in this fungus has proven to be a double-edged sword. On the positive side, chaga is being investigated for use in mainstream medicine. Initial studies have shown chaga has potential as an antioxidant, which are molecules that fight off harmful free radicals in the body that can cause health conditions like cancer. Chaga is also being investigated as an anti-diabetic since it's been preliminarily shown to lower blood sugar. On top of all that, this fungus also seems to curb inflammation and is being tested for its powers as an anti-inflammatory. Part of the reason everyone is gaga for chaga is because of its promise in the battle against cancer. Chaga has been widely reported on for its anti-cancer activity, though according to the records, even this isn't a new revelation. A tale from historical chronicles claims that a 12th century Ukrainian prince's lip tumor was cured with the use of chaga. With cancer being one of the leading causes of death worldwide today, it's no wonder that researchers are delving deeply into any promising anti-cancer treatments. Because of this growing interest, both in medicine and as a superfood, we have to talk about the other side of that double-edged sword, over-exploitation and commercialization of this fungus. Commercial harvesting practices with a lack of understanding of the nuances of chaga growth can have very dire ecological consequences. The slow growth of chaga over decades means it's vulnerable to overharvesting. On top of that, since the fruiting body that releases the spores to create more chaga doesn't even appear until years after the tree has died, overharvesting before this stage will mean that the fungus cannot multiply at all. And because chaga is a parasite and needs an adult host tree to grow, that makes cultivation outside of existing mature forests extremely difficult. One logical solution would be to select the fastest maturing and most aggressive strains to produce chaga faster. But this threatens to throw everything out of its fine balance if this souped up strain of chaga was unleashed on the forest ecosystem. So while farmers are already looking for sustainable ways to grow chaga, currently its future in the wild may be in question if harvesting is left unchecked. So maybe the real cure we need to look for within this crusty fungus is the cure for human greed. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye. What are you looking at, cat? You can't have any of this. This is grown up drink.